India is the first country in the world to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. A moment of history for the country. Cheering from scientists at the Space Research Centre in India after the country became the only nation in the world to successfully reach Mars on its first attempt. But the story of how we got here didn't begin with billion dollar budgets or giant machines. It began with hope. In a newly independent India, where poverty shadowed every ambition, one man dared to believe that science could lift an entire nation. Vikram Sarabhai, the father of the Indian space program. Dr. Vikram Ambalal Sarabhai was born on August 12, 1919 in Ahmedabad, Gujarat into one of India's most influential industrial families. His father, Ambalal Sarabhai, was a pioneering industrialist known for modernizing textile and chemical industries while his mother, Sala Devi, was deeply involved in social causes and Gandhian initiatives. The Sarabhai household combined privilege with public responsibility and it often hosted leading intellectuals, artists and political figures. This environment exposed young Vikram to discussions on social reform, science and culture from an early age, instilling a sense that knowledge and resources should serve the nation. From childhood, Sarabhai demonstrated a persistent curiosity about the natural world he built small mechanical devices, experimented with electricity, and observed celestial phenomena with care and attention. Even within the comforts of a privileged household, he spent hours independently exploring scientific ideas, testing hypotheses, and analyzing results. In school in Gujarat, he excelled in mathematics and physics, consistently demonstrating analytical skills, logical reasoning, and an aptitude for problem solving. Beyond academics, he engaged with literature, philosophy and debates on social issues which shaped his broad perspective and appreciation for interdisciplinary knowledge. In 1937, Sarabhai travelled to St. John's College, Cambridge to pursue the natural sciences tripos. Cambridge exposed him to advanced concepts in physics, cosmology and laboratory research. He interacted with some of the brightest minds in the world, learning rigorous scientific methodology and developing a global outlook. Despite the opportunities available abroad, Sarabhai remained focused on India's scientific future and envisioned ways to apply research for national development. During World War II, Sarabhai returned to India and joined the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, to work under Nobel laureate C. V. Raman. There, he focused on cosmic rays and upper atmospheric physics, contributing research that gained recognition within India and internationally. Raman himself remarked that Sarabhai was among the few young Indian scientists combining intellectual rigor with initiative and vision. This mentorship strengthened Sarabhai's scientific expertise and reinforced his determination to develop India's research infrastructure. After the war, Sarabhai returned to Cambridge to complete his PhD in 1947, presenting his thesis, Cosmic Ray Investigations in Tropical Latitudes. His research examined the behavior of high-energy cosmic particles in tropical regions, an area largely unexplored in India. The work established him as a credible physicist and laid the foundation for his later focus on applied science. Returning to a newly independent India, Sarabhai saw the country's potential for growth alongside the limitations in research infrastructure. He believed that scientific self-reliance was critical for national progress and that India needed research institutions capable of training scientists and conducting world-class experiments. He envisioned a system where research could be integrated with social development, addressing practical challenges in communication, education and technology. In 1947, leveraging support from Kastabhai Lalbhai and the Ahmedabad Education Society, Sarabhai founded the Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, 
in Ahmedabad. PRL began in a small room at the MG Science Institute and soon expanded to include laboratories for experimental physics and observational facilities for cosmic rays. It was India's first institution dedicated to advanced research in physics and it combined scientific inquiry with the training of young Indian scientists. PRL would later serve as the cradle of India's space program, embodying Sarabhai's belief that research and development should directly contribute to national progress. In a nation newly emerging from colonial rule, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai planted the foundations of independent Indian science, creating institutions and nurturing talent that would one day carry India's ambitions into space. By the late 1940s, the PRL in Ahmedabad had begun to take shape under Dr. Vikram Sarabhai's leadership. What started as a modest setup with a few instruments and a handful of researchers quickly evolved into one of India's foremost scientific centers. Sarabhai envisioned PRL not just as a research institution, but as a nucleus of scientific growth, one that would nurture talent, foster independent thinking, and address questions relevant to India's environment and resources. The laboratory's first major focus was on cosmic rays and upper atmospheric physics, areas that connected Sarabhai's Cambridge research with India's tropical geography. Early studies at PRL helped clarify how cosmic radiation behaved near the magnetic equator, producing data that gained attention from global scientists. Despite limited facilities, Sarabhai and his team published results that placed India on the international research map. Sarabhai approached scientific work with both precision and purpose. He emphasized that research should be relevant to society while maintaining the highest standards of rigor. At PRL, young scientists were encouraged to design experiments, ask questions freely, and explore interdisciplinary topics. Sarabhai believed that scientific independence required intellectual independence. His laboratory became a place where new ideas could be debated, tested, and improved. Beyond its scientific work, PRL was a training ground for future leaders in Indian science. Many of its early researchers, such as E. V. Chitnis, R. Aravamudan, and U. R. Rao, later played key roles in the country's space and research programs. Sarabhai's mentorship style combined accessibility with expectation. He demanded thorough work, but treated young researchers as collaborators, not subordinates. Recognizing the value of international collaboration, Sarabhai built relationships with institutions in Europe and the United States. PRL exchanged research findings and hosted visiting scientists who helped strengthen India's experimental capabilities. Sarabhai's philosophy was clear. India should learn from global partners, but the direction of research should always serve national priorities. Not all of his initiatives were free of challenge. PRL, like most early scientific centers in India, faced financial constraints and administrative hurdles. There were debates over whether advanced research was a justified expense for a newly independent nation still struggling with poverty and illiteracy. Sarabhai responded to such skepticism with characteristic calm, arguing that long-term progress required investment in science and education. His conviction and persuasive reasoning won support from the government of India and from policymakers such as Prime Minister Nehru. By the late 1950s, PRL had earned international recognition as a center for excellence in physics and atmospheric studies. It became a model for how indigenous research institutions could operate successfully with limited resources. For Sarabhai, the laboratory's success confirmed a broader idea that India could chart its own scientific path without dependence on foreign systems. This growing confidence led him to look upward, literally. As global interest in space exploration rose following the launch of Sputnik in 1957, Sarabhai began to see a new opportunity. He believed that space science could become India's next frontier, not for prestige, but for its potential to improve communication, weather forecasting and education. 
the foundations laid at PRL in research, training and institutional management gave him the perfect springboard for this ambitious vision. PRL had proven what Sarabhai always believed, that world-class science could thrive in India. Now, he was ready to turn his gaze from the cosmic rays above Ahmedabad to the vast expanse of space itself. The world was racing into space, and India was just waking up to its own destiny. One man had a vision to launch rockets, satellites, and dreams alike. From the first rocket fired at Thumba to the birth of Isro, from sending Aryabhata to reaching the moon's south pole. Don't miss the exciting part of this documentary.